training in jiu-jitsu is mandatory for police forces. It's, you know, for special forces, for Navy SEALs, things like that. They're making uh, mm. jiu-jitsu mandatory training. And I think that's the right direction. And that's what uh, happened in Abu Dhabi. It's mandatory in school. That's cool. I yeah. really like that. That's a... I, I never thought, like, I never thought that would be a thing. But now that you bring it up, it does kind of make sense. Just giving everyone maybe a year, a couple years training of, what do you call it, self-defense? Or just, yeah. you know, yeah. just a little bit of knowledge on how to handle yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it's it, it would go, I mean, I, I had a, f- a friend uh, years ago who owned a little store. He was being extorted by this big guy. Mm. The guy would show up and take things and threaten him. And he was just a young fellow. He was like 20 years old. And yeah. He was, he was terrified, uh, you know, and uh, he came to me and I showed him three things. I showed him uh, how to shoot in, I showed him a takedown, and I showed him mount, and that was it. And the guy came back and stood up the guy, challenged, took him outside, shot him, took him down, mounted him, punched him, you know, 10 or 20 times, he said, until the no. guy gave up. And the guy never bothered him again. He came to me, he was so excited, the next day I saw him, his knees were all cut up, his knuckles were all busted. He's like, he goes, that guy came back, and he was so excited, he was so happy. That was uh, an hour lesson. And, uh, you know, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, you know, the guy knew nothing, which is big. And he, he was, you know, being a bully, basically. And so, if you, like, can you, uh, in, 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 like, if we're not, you know, touching each other right now, but could you tell me maybe, like, what the first step is to not going from zero to 100 to assessing the situation to making a situation calm down? Well, again, it, so there's a, a lot of different situations. Um, can I bring so, one up and then you yeah, can, like, yeah. you okay, can so let's go. Um, let me think of a situation. Okay, I'm at a restaurant with my girlfriend. There's a really drunk guy that's sitting a couple tables over. He's being obnoxious. My girlfriend's sitting next to, like, a window, and she's cold, so she closes the window, and this guy wants the window open. And now there's an altercation, and now i got to step in. So is he getting up and coming to you? Or he's he getting just... up and not even – he's going to the window and opening it, saying, I want this window open, but obviously yeah. it's my girlfriend, so i got to stick up for her. So what, what, <laughs> what, am, right. I, what am I doing? Well, okay, your first step would be to go to management and say, listen, we'd like the window closed. Okay. You can avoid the okay, situation. Okay, they, okay. Can, they can deal with them. Okay. However, if, if it does come down to you and him standing facing each other, um, first of all, uh, if you have skills, uh, drunk guys are like fighting toddlers. They're, they're completely, you know, um, okay. it's not even fair, you know. Um, so okay, well, let's say he's sober then. Okay, he's yeah, let's say he's sober and he's and he's being a dick. Okay, uh, when you're talking to him, you're you're if you you have to be able to assess a threat, and you can judge a threat by um, body language, um, things like uh, his foot position, what he's doing with his hands. Is he making fists? Uh, is he turning a little offset to the side? Uh, is he clenching his jaw? Is he raising his voice? Is his face red? So you can judge by his anger and, and whether or not he's going to wow. be a threat. Um, so, uh, and so if you, the things that you just mentioned, would that guy be a threat? A guy that's his feet are yeah. that's a if threat. He's, if he's yeah, if he's showing locked. those signs of aggression, then then he's a threat. And um, one of the things I, you tell fighters is that uh, you know you want to feel out process and things like that. However, if a fighter, uh, your opponent comes at you in fifth gear and you're in first gear, even though you may be much better than him, he can still win. He can still beat you. Okay. Uh, if you get caught out of position uh, by someone who's using overwhelming force suddenly. Yeah. So most fights last 30 seconds, maybe a minute. Street fights. Um, this so is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, if if this guy assumes that stance, and you should take a, a defensive stance as well. And one of the things you have to decide is uh, which tact you're going to take. So a lot of people, one of the things I found was that certain people being nice to them gave them bigger balls. They got they got nastier, meaner. Um, and in certain situations, you have to uh, you have to be you know the big dog. So you got to let this guy know that you're not afraid of him, mm. uh, and that'll go a long way. Um, mm. and, you know, being calm, talking to him, and letting him know. You know, some of the times the best way to avoid a fight is when some guy's threatening you, saying, you know, listen, I know how you, you know you think this is how it's going to go, but that's not how it's going to go. No, <laughs> um, you're, I'm, you're gonna lose, and and you know when you show that confidence, often they wilt, they back down, they walk away. And you can avoid problems. Okay. Um, so and, and beyond that, it becomes how much skill do you have uh, <laughs> to back up what you're gonna say? Uh, and you know I've been in situations where I've, I've had a lot of fights, and 99% of the time, again, it's like beating up toddlers. 1% of the time, I fought guys who who knew things, who were good, knew jujitsu could wrestle new judo uh, yeah. we're in great shape incredibly strong things like that um and 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 so many of the fights like i fought a guy one time who was about 350 pounds a big huge powerful muscular guy like in not in real life like in just real, in real just, life yeah yeah uh, he and he we were inside uh the barn he he was being asked to leave and refused to leave and 
he came out carrying four security staff, literally, like they were, he was walking with them on him, carrying them. No. And uh, so I told him, you know, go back inside, I thought I'd reason with the guy, he just charged me, he ran me into the coat check wall, and we heard the whole wall crack and everything, and so I slipped my hands in, into a lapel choke, a cross choke in his jacket, and uh, almost put him to sleep, his knees buckled, he went limp, and I talked to him, I was like, you going to relax, he struggled again, I put him limp again, and... Um, so they called the police. The police arrived, and like four or five cops came in the lobby, and uh, they're like, "Let him go." I'm like, like, guys, you may want to cuff him first. Like, no, let him go. We got him. I let him go, and he went wild. I had to choke him again, and then they were the him. police pissed at you. No, no, they, they didn't care. They're just like, "Thanks for doing that." Yeah, well, like, they, yeah, they were like, yeah, "That's just a situation. They don't know what they're dealing with, right?" They, so then, why aren't you training police? Like, why isn't that a thing? Why well, aren't you I being mean, paid by that? That's the, that's the police hierarchy has a certain entrenched or or, or system in there uh, where they have training and you know some police officers who've done who i've talked to who i know say you know it's it's not that good and not the training polite. that they're getting now yeah, it's not yeah, and it's being polite you know well then why aren't they coming to you why don't well i don't know not, why they don't have to come to me they should but, go you know, to people like you yeah <laughs> i mean i'd be happy to do it i often do it for free as a matter of fact you know i'd be happy to do it well it seems like uh, right now more than ever there's a demand for it you absolutely. could be making some not that the end goal is to make money but it would help but well i mean if it saves lives and, yeah. and i think it's, a, it's i think you know it's on the side of the angels you know we're helping yeah. you know society um so that's why i said listen we'll do it for free we'll send them we'll send them over we'll train them we'll go over there we'll train them whatever you like so do you have police officers that stop stop by every now and then we have police to... officers regular members that we train yeah. oh no way yeah uh, who are uh, we got one guy uh, who's amazing he's he's a beast yeah he's got w- w- mad skills um uh and uh you know uh I'd hate to be a criminal facing him, I'll tell you that. Because uh, <laughs> he's not going to have to, he, he just twist you up and put the cuffs on you. And, you know, he's not going to have to shoot you. 